I'm a software engineer, but sometimes I tinker hardware, electronic hardware, from time to time, when I feel like it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about connecting Internet of Things, or things, to the Internet with electric imp. Who among you here have used electric imp before? Platform? Or have heard it before? OK, OK, there's, so I'm in the right crowd. <laughs> So electric imp is this little thing that you see here. It's not an SD card, actually, we'll see it later. So the pla I'm going to talk about the platform, and then the hardware later, and then the smart socket is a small project that I did with it. And then I'm going to show you a demo of the smart socket, and maybe we can have a look at the source code, how simple it is. How it's 20 lines of code. And then if we have enough time, we'll do a live coding demo. Let's, we'll build an Internet of Things. Live, okay. So the platform. Platform is a so internet. Uh, electric Imp is a end-to-end -end solution. So it's from hardware to firmware to operating system to cloud services, and everything is ev every cloud services is free for use. So it's not. It's a commercial platform, by the way, but it's free for use as long as you have the hardware. <laughs> and there are lots of open source libraries available in GitHub for you to start with. So the hardware is this thing. It's not an SD card. And there's the green, the board is actually a breakout board. It's called the April breakout board. And it has a, it's a computer. It's not an SD card. It has a 32-bit ARM CPU inside with 80 KB of RAM and 120 KB of code storage. It's not, it's not much, but we don't need it much. We'll see it later. And it has a built-in Wi-Fi chip inside. And built-in antenna. It has other. It also has power-saving components. It's actually a very low-power device, so you can run the device connected to the internet at they claim like six milliamps only. And you can also configure. You can actually code it to sleep and only wake up at a certain time, like every one hour, wake up and measure the haze or the air quality of Singapore and go back to sleep again. And in sleep mode, it actually consumes four microamps. So you can power it in a double-A battery. OK. Since it's an SD card, so there are only, we only have nine pins available. And uh, two pins are power, ground, and positive. A third pin is required for ID. It's for authentication. So it requires an ID chip. So if you look at the board here, there's actually an ID chip, a very small one. I don't have a pointer, but yeah. It's required for every imp for authentication, for security. And the remaining pins are GPIOs and can be configured whatever you wish. So it can be a digital input, digital output, analog input, output, UART, I2C, PWM, whatever you want. Okay. And there are different packages of electric imp. So the one I showed you is the first two photos. There are other packages with more GPIO pins. And there are other packages. The one on top is actually a very small one, 10 mm by 10 mm. It's used by manufacturers mostly, not for, not for hobbyists or for makers. Okay. And then there are other development boards here. OK. And the chip runs an IMP OS. It's a proprietary OS, so we don't have access to it. And it runs a virtual machine within the chip. And the IDE is in the cloud. Okay. The IDE, we don't need to install anything to start coding with it. OK. And then the programming language used is Quirrell. So it's originally, <laughs> it's originally a programming language for, for video, video game scripting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. It's an object. He's actually here. <laughs> OK. OK, it's, a, it's an object-oriented high-level language, very, very familiar, almost like JavaScript. OK. And the photo that you see here is actually the IDE that runs in the browser. And for every chip that you have, for every imp that you have, you will have a corresponding virtual machine running in the cloud as well that is hardwired to the virtual machine that is in the imp. OK? So though, I'm going to talk about the simple project I made. Let me turn this off quickly first. 
Okay, smart socket. So it's a uh, it's very simple. 250 volt switch ten, with 10 amps. It can control the 10 amps of load, and can be controlled from the internet. So there are some commercials that we see, uh, commercial products we see like Belkin that you can control in, from your mobile app, from a mobile phone. But it's not the same because that one is you can control it through Wi-Fi to your phone. This one you can control. This is controllable through the internet. So even if this thing is in Malaysia and you're in Singapore, it will work. It connects to the internet. So it's a bit different. And it's the, the circuit is very simple. So if, if you look at this is schematic, the left side three pin is the, I only use one pin just because it's just an on off output. So pin seven for the demo. And then a driver chip and the relay. Okay. And the five volt switch mode power supply that I used is actually I, I salvaged it from uh, an old cell phone charger because I need to make it very small so I can fit it in a box, this box, like a regular convenience outlet box that you see in your HDBs. <laughs> okay. It actually look, it's very ugly, but <laughs> but it works. So this is the the vertical board is the one is the power supply. And the rest is just, this is the imp, and this is the relay, very small relay, and the driver chip is behind. Okay, so let's take a look at it. It's actually here, it's actually this one. It looks like a very regular outlet. So it's turned on right now. Um, and I'm going to show you before this. Let's take a look at the electric M ID. Okay, uh, so you need to create an account. By the way, when you have the chip, you need to set up an account and re you register the M to your account, so it will it will appear here. So this is this is it. That's the ID. So it's running it's running in browser. And that's the source code of the device. The right side is the source code for the device. This code runs in the VM in the device, in the chip. So it, it's this chip. And then the left side is it will run in the VM on the cloud. And then there are already connect the pipeline is already set up for you. You don't need to worry about firewall or everything. So it's already set up. And its its programming model is similar to Node.js, so it's event driven. And if you're going to walk through here, if you look at this, so the code here says agent on, switch on. What it means is actually it's an event handler. You wire up to, whenever you see an event, it says switch on, execute this function. That's it. And this, this is the function, the switch, that controls the switch, which is, says outlet that write to out the outlet state. So it's very, very verbal because it's, very, it's object oriented, so you don't need to handle memory addresses and then etc. So when you want to configure the pin, you just say hardware, the pin seven, configure it as a digital output, that's it. And you're done. So in 20 lines of code, you have a switch that can be controlled through the internet. Okay? And then on the, on the left hand side is the source code of the agent. They call it the VM that is running in the, in the cloud is actually called the agent. And here, what you see here is just, I created a very simple HTML page that will display two buttons so that we can use it. And then the main code that executes the command here is this thing. So device the send switch on, and I'm going to send the state. It actually triggers this event. So th with this event, so we send the data or the switch or the logic to the pin, like one or zero. And this thing here in the, the virtual machine in the cloud is accessible through a URL. So it's specific to your device. Every device, every chip, you will have an agent URL for you. So you will see it here. And that URL will have an event handler here, HTTP on request, execute the event handler. That's it. So it's time to see how it works. I have here my phone. Uh, you, you can actually try it yourself. If I'm going to go back here. 
if you have a barcode reader, this is the URL of the agent, and it will give you a button, and you can control it yourself. OK? So I have it, I already ha I have it here op already open. So I can turn it off. I can turn it on. So this is it. I, I plugged an IKEA lamp in there. <laughs> so OK. And then to see in the ID, you also see a log. So because I, in my call, I said log. So you will see the activities here in the bottom. So you see HTTP request received. So it's on or off. So, so it's live. It's in, it's, in, it's in the cloud. You can control it anywhere you are in the world. OK? And then, um, since you ha already have the switch available in the internet, you can control it whatever you want, so like a mobile phone, a website, a web page, or you can control it through another imp. So another imp that will read some data, like a button maybe, <laughs> so something is con someone's controlling it, and then, <laughs> and then yeah. Send uh, an, another imp that will control this, will send a signal to the agent, and then the agent will control this thing. And I have here like a very simple circuit, like one electric imp. I'm powering it with a power bank here. <laughs> and then a motion sensor, like a very simple motion sensor. It's uh, 50 cents in, in AliExpress. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, let, let's take a look. So as, as soon as you see the light blinks green, it means it's connected to the cloud. So let's see. Now it's connected to the cloud. And I can also open the source code of the motion detector, which is, OK. I can go to my models. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Is if you look at the source code, very simple. Sixteen lines of code. It says here, configure pin one as a as a digital input, and then read the value of pin one. And then once you see on or off, just call the agent or raise an event in my agent. And in my agent, I'm calling the agent of the another imp. I'm calling the, this is the URL of another imp, so I can control the imp from a motion sensor. So if I'm going to take a look at the logs here, see, it, it detected motion, it's already on here, and it should, it should turn on the imp, something like that. So from the motion. So now we have two things talking t to each other through the internet. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's, we just made an um, Internet of Things in few minutes. So it's very simple. In 30 lines of code, you have Internet of Things. Do you have any questions? The, the VM in the top, is it microservices or is it VM running? It's a VM running in their infrastructure. And then you just you are only allowed to access it through that interface, the IDE. So only write write the code. So microservices or is it a VM? I would not call it a microservice. It's a service, yes, but it's not a, really a microservice. So. Yeah. Yes. How much will one of these two go for? Um, I bought this in DigiKey for thirty dollars, thirty-five dollars. Okay. So the card. So it's it's. The same cost as your um, Wi-Fi module, Wi-Fi, yeah, Wi-Fi card for Arduino or something. Yeah. yeah, and then you already have an MCU. You have a cloud service. You don't need to worry about setting up your servers, etc. It's quite a bit more features. Yeah. Do you use any access control, or anybody who can get access to the phone can control it? Um, yes, the access control is it's your concern. It's, you have to manage it yourself. But if you look at the transport security, it's, it's actually HTTPS. So you don't need to worry about man-in-the-middle attack. So you only need to do some, some uh, authentication, a higher level authentication for yourself. Okay. 
Okay. Yes? Any questions? Yes? What is your next project? Ah, okay. I'm actually currently working on a, um, an IR blaster. So it's a, it's a device that will control any infrared control device at my home. And I can control it through the internet. So, so like before I go home, I can turn on my AC. So it's, when I arrive, it's really cold. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I, I'm struggling a bit in the protocol of Sony because it's proprietary. So some other infrared protocols are open. So it's a bit open, like Panasonic, standard. So. This is your personal project, guys, no? Yes, it's a personal project. And I don't work for electric imp. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes. What made you want to try this out as a software developer? Ah. Before I became a software developer, I was actually a consumer electronics mechanic. I did uh, a, a short while. I did uh, independent consulting in industrial automation, so I was in the ma manufacturing field also. Yeah. That's it. Okay, I think we're done here. Thank you.